used to own a little Buccaneer XA, and the original design of the Buccaneer XA was based on, on the Hummer. And I flew one that was wide open, uh, just like this one is. This is actually one of the original Hummers uh, that Dennis uh, designed uh, way back in the uh, early 80s. This is a 1978 Hummer built by Max Air. Uh, Dennis Franklin put it in production, but it was a Kloss Hill design. And this one, actually, uh, Kloss Hill assembled this kit himself. And I'm honored to be able to fly it. Now, how did you uh, pick the airplane up, or what's some of the history between you and the airplane? Um, I just got this one a little over a year ago. I basically bought it for a song. From uh, It was a hand-me-down from a couple of different people. Um, I actually bought it from Dennis Franklin. Somebody sold it back to him, and then I bought it from him. Um, but I had, I owned one. My very first airplane was a Hummer just like this. I bought uh, for $2,500 with a Zenoa engine on it. Um, I learned to fly it. My first solo flight was in, not this airplane, one identical to it. Do you have any idea how many of these are actually in production uh, when uh, Dennis was building? I really don't know. That'd be a question for Dennis. But I get the idea that there's about two or 300 kits that were sold. Um, I don't really know the numbers on that. I know when uh, I bought my Drifter in 91, it, it was a 1984 Drifter, and they had already stopped production on this airplane. Now, talk a little bit about the airplane. Now, it's standard uh, stick and uh, rudder style of control? Uh, no, it's a V-tail, so it's only two axis control, and these are called rudivators. And this, this old mixer is really a very ingenious idea the way the stick goes back and forth and forward and aft which raises and lowers the uh, the renovators together or separately and uh, it's a real ingenious idea it's real simple it's got it's got a spring on here so you got no weight when you're on the ground and of course when you're flying it's neutral anyway uh, it flies at about 28 miles an hour and uh, top speeds about 34 and um, I'm a little light actually. Uh, I moved the motor forward about 11 inches um, and I could have gone about 14 inches. Now, is but this one of the original engines that was... Uh, this is an original engine that was sold with this airplane. I have no idea the history. I didn't get any log books or history books with this one. Um, that may well be the original engine from 1978. Horsepower is it? 22 horsepower. It's a Zenoa. And it's using a what? A, a belt drive uh, reduction? Yes, it's a belt drive reduction. I think it's two. It's right at two to one or two two point four to one. And what kind of propeller? What size propeller are you using? Uh, I think that's a Tennessee prop. It's 54 inch, uh, 54 34, I believe. Now, when you got the airplane, uh, if you, it's like 30. 34 years old? 31. 31, 31 years old? Yeah. Did you have to do anything to the airplane in order to make it flyable after all that time? Um, well, I moved the motor forward, so I rearranged some of the uh, motor mount bolts, and as you can see where I moved, the, uh, the tail wheel is on the, the original position motor mount, and then I, I, Lockwood still had an old motor mount in their box of junk over there, and so I was able to get a forward mount for the motor. Um, I didn't have to build that, but I got the last one. <laughs> um, but I didn't really have to do anything to it. I cleaned it up a little bit, put a new spark and bolt in it, and it started on the third pole. And I don't know when it flew last. Um, Virgil had it, and he was going to Brazil or whatever, and that's been at least four years. And um, I actually got it running last year, and um, hang it above my drifter in my hangar and I fly it when the weather's nice. It's a 34 foot wingspan with a 47 inch ground track so any little bit of crosswind can lift a wing. You can go out there and lift the wing with me sitting in the seat with one finger. Now are there parts available for it or no. would you have, you'd have to do anything yourself if you would make a hard land or something like that? Um, originally there was a complete parts manual that detailed all the specs you could completely build an airplane from the original parts manual that was sold with it. Um, I happen to be lucky enough to have that manual. Um, 
but the parts are not available. Uh, I've got a few extra parts that came with the airplane. I've got all new landing gear pieces except the main gear. Uh, I've got the down pieces. i got a bunch of pieces parts. Um, so pretty much if you tear it up, you fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to tear it up. Now you've got a, a unique uh, hangering system for this thing. Uh, you just uh, basically uh, fasten it onto the king post, or how do you uh, lift it up? Uh, actually, I, I lift it from the uh, forward end of the motor mount tube, and then I have a little drag line that comes over and hooks to this wing to keep it from flopping around. And then I put a cushion on the wing tips, pull it all the way up to the hanger roof, and it rests on the hanger beams. And I just pull it up till the cable's taut, and. Uh, the wind doesn't blow it around too much when the hangar door is open because it's it's pretty tight up there. So if somebody had one of these and wanted to get in contact with you, have you got an email address or something? I do. Can... It's Laverne501 at yahoo.com. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Company back there just about at the tree. You want to go find otherwise we'll